and that's going to be uh, an error on that young second baseman. This may be his first start. I don't know. I'm no, just... he started uh, quite a good bit okay. uh, early in the season in the non-region games. He, with uh, That was Garrett. when Garrett was out. Yeah, and Garrett. Garrett's out today. And I was going to mention um, that there was, an, there was a, an accident this afternoon. I'm not going to call out any names specific, but uh, a, a little more than a fender bender. Uh, some, some, some of the guys, it involved a couple of the guys on the team. Um, just just remember them. Uh, they're, they're going to be okay. They checked out okay, but they were banged up just a little bit as they were uh, ran to the store after school like a lot of them do, pick up a few things and then come back to the ballpark. Um, but, uh, but again, a couple of those guys won't be playing tonight. And uh, so we'll just, again, see how things plays out. Yes. And that, that runner at second now was Caden Spivey. He was the number two in the Vidalia lineup. Now at bat is Hugh Graham, and he is – their uh, catcher, and uh, yeah, we had a incident earlier, and that's another knock to center. It's going to advance the runner. And that's and and this time of the day, if you can tell, the sunshine is right in the face of our center fielder uh, Brady Cothern, um, right straight up the middle from the pitcher. Uh, you know, the second and shortstop, they got to be extremely careful, making sure they keep their eye on the ball. Um, you know, we do have this netting, or excuse me, this shading, I would call it, in place, but it really isn't effective until later in the game, and then it don't really matter, ultimately. I, it was some, I don't know. I don't understand it, but I'm not going to throw anybody under the bus as a, as a whole. But it's, uh, it's, it's it just really hasn't worked out how this field was designed uh, as far as the way it uh, faces the, the setting sun. Yeah, going through the whole infrastructure of the schoolhouse and how everything was built out here, you – Longer you, the longer you go here, the more you start to question who was in charge of everything. <laughs> Again, Knox on the mound for the Raiders. Uh, and he's uh, is he a sophomore. He's a freshman. Oh, boy. Yeah. We've got a lot of fresh meat out there. We've got, uh, let's see, I can count them up for you. we got two freshmen playing now, two seniors playing now on the, on the nine, on the diamond, only two seniors. Uh, one junior, no, maybe two juniors, and the rest are sophomore. I mean, and you know, and as I said earlier, it's a it's a good problem to have for a coach. Uh, you know, being able to have some some young guys to get this experience um, in a season again, which they've struggled. Um, and 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 again, it's uh, you know we really struggled during that non-region uh, schedule. We played a lot of really good teams. That was part of the problem. We played uh, a lot of. Uh, quality opponents and, in that non region. You know, and, and, and it, we got kind of beat up. We was waiting on some pitchers to get healthy and this, that, and the other. But uh, uh, so, again, uh, we're, we're where we're at. We, this is going. This week's going to wrap up the regular season. We'll move in the postseason. It looks like, again, that's the number four seed. Yeah, as long as a certain scenario happens in the Swainsboro and um, Toombs County games this week, we will be in a very good situation in the number four. And I believe that was the first strike on this this batter here. And I believe this is going to their number four, which is Ty Daly, Vidalia's first baseman. But, yeah, we've, we've not had a lot coming from a somewhat of an insider view with my uh, me being able to help the baseball team a good bit here. This season, um, we've not had a whole lot go right this season. When just when everything seems to be going right, happens stuff like today happens. You know, crazy right. accidents. And last week our issue was sickness. We had two guys sick. That one of them, one of them toughed it out, and that was Jackson. One of them toughed it out, and he wound up playing that game. And uh, but the other guy was Garrett, and Garrett's just had a rough season this season. He's just had a – and uh, that was a nice play by the freshman there. Good play all together by it, that team. It, it was a nice uh, – call that a pickle. Uh, when you get the guy, you you know, the, we were always coached and taught to, to make sure you push, and they didn't do that there right at the end. Now, they got the out. Um, I'm being a little critical, but you typically want to push the runner back to where he came from. So, if, he, if you don't get the out, he does not have an opportunity to advance. Um, but that's – neither here nor there because we did get the out. And that's the second out of the inning. You know, early in the season they practiced that a lot, the pickles. 
they practice the pickles a lot, and uh, they've not had a whole many in region play, which is pretty much been the only. I mean, take away Jeff Davis, and the rest of the other, the rest of the games have been pretty quality. If you take away Jeff Davis, have been pretty, pretty hard fought games. Competitive, yeah. We had a really nice series against Tombs. We had a fluke on that first game, the double header. We had to move, which double headers at this at this age and this competitive this level it just doesn't seem right we're not you know we're not at the rec league ball fields anymore playing a saturday tournament yeah where you're playing five six seven games yeah trying to trying to work his way out of this inning ball was hit sharply oh just a sharp hit tough play there for the and that's Right in the gap, uh, runner, another runner's going to score. He's going to head to third and going to be – probably could have stood up. Yeah, but, he's uh, going to be safe at third. Nice gonna... and easy. Sharply hit ball again to the to the uh, freshman second baseman and diving uh, a, a diving opportunity, uh, unable to knock it down. But uh, just a tough play. And, again, you talk, you're dealing with that sun. You can see the shadow. It's, um, it went directly, you know, into his into his eyes believe that takes us to I didn't get a number on him but I believe that's going to be Jordan Walden up to bat for the Vandalia Indians. I think that's has that two runs in? Yes. It's hard for me to see the board with sun on it. Yes that's two runs in now and another hit to the second baseman and that's and what, he's going to make that play. Yeah that's what that's he needed. Gonna, he needed a, uh, a little can good, of, go ahead I'm sorry good I'm confidence walk, booster for talking him. all over you Caleb I'm sorry <laughs> I'm going to be quiet you're doing a good job um, yeah. I'm used to talking all over Sky, because I, I don't, you know, I respect you more than him. So. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we're going to take a quick break here as we uh, honor our sponsors, and I'll talk more about them as the game progresses. We'll be back in just a moment on the NFHS Network. Who we got leading off here, Caleb? We have got Jackson Connor. He's been a pretty solid one-hole hitter all season, uh, as every team does. You move people around at the beginning of the season, but I'm pretty sure that him being the leadoff has been pretty, pretty consistent all season. He's usually a, a solid, solid guy. It usually takes him one or two, 
uh, at bats to get fired up, which isn't the greatest in the world, but he gets there. He lays down some good bunts too. Well, he's again as, as big a fellow as I mentioned earlier. He's pretty athletic, six uh, three, maybe six four, two fifteen or so, um, two twenty. Uh, but typically your leadoff batter is someone that will put the bat on the ball in some form or fashion. Yes. Uh, he is very consistent at getting on base. Did you just jinx him? <laughs> I, I hope not. <laughs> that's that's going to be strikeout number one for the Raiders as as the leadoff batter. Connor does, does strike out. Um, and that's going to put us to Jarrett Arnery. Arnie. Arnery? Yeah, Arnery. <laughs> Don't know where that comes from. Got to put us uh, – with Arnie here. Your mom, does your mama have an NFHS account? I believe she does. I'm fixing to text her. I have one. I'm fixing to text her and tell her she needs to get online and listen to you. <laughs> Te- text her. I'm going uh, to get my wife. She's here visiting. Yeah, I, I have one. I was watching the soccer game the other day when you said you wasn't commentating, but you were. I almost, was talking you some. Was, you was almost giving a play by play. Well, it's. it's uh, I, I for sure don't see well enough to – I pick out players by how they move, their, how they run and stuff versus the numbers a lot of time because like, it's difficult for me to see. Yeah. Uh, for sure at the football field, I, I, it's horrible because we're so far up in the, in the stadium and the stands that it's, it's hard to see jersey numbers. Um, well, there's a lot going on at a football field with, <laughs> with usually five to – Five to nine people crowded in one area That's right. down there, That's and then right. the rest of them are spread out across the field. I mean, it's, it's – Arnie draws the walk there, and that's always a good thing. Get a base runner on. We're down two to nothing. We want to see if we can uh, trim that lead. And that's going to – with Arnie on the walk, we're going to bring out Jason Guest to courtesy run for him. Ben sees the catcher tonight. And uh, that's going to bring up Brady Cothran, who has been – Almost as consistent as Jackson, yeah. if not more. This guy can't run. He's slow. He's with my yeah, very he, he's slow. He's like he's dragging bowling balls. Very slow. Goes. I mean, he's just – this he, guy right here is – we talk about Jackson being an athlete, and this guy's a little bit shorter than Jackson. And he, he There's quite, a double down or maybe triple now. His kids can run. Watch him go. He's going to try to stretch it out, no doubt. He's hoping the coach is going to send him. And he is. We're going to get a run in. and it's going to run. Be a stand-up triple for Brady. Yeah. Because he smoked it down that right field line. Our camera doesn't move, but um, that ball went all the way to the corner, the way that way it angled and the spin it had on it. So just a long run for the right fielder. Yeah. Um, it was fair past the base, and then it just curled over to the corner. And that was a nice little play by him. Like I said, he's been very consistent and almost been the clutch player this year. If we was in them situations, he'd be the one that you wanted up at bait, uh, up at bat. Yeah. yeah. He, about 10, uh, probably 30 feet from 10 yards or so, uh, which is 30 feet, uh, from second base. He was looking over at the coach at third. Just I know he was just saying, please, please let me go, let me go. Yeah. Uh, but he was able to you know, stretch it to a triple. Uh, one out, uh, one on, one in. Two to one here early in the bottom of the first inning. Again, if you're just joining us, thank you for joining us on the NFHS Network. My name is Brent Johnson along with uh, Landon. Uh, Spencer, he's producing the show on the computer, um, making sure you're seeing everything accurately on the score bug, and and I'm able to pay Caleb enough uh, to uh, join me on the air sky. He he couldn't be here tonight. I'm I'm ashamed to say where he's at, uh, but uh, but yeah, he he couldn't be here tonight to got to commentate and talk a little bit. This is Knox Ledbetter, our. Uh pitcher in the night. He's, he's up at bat now. Another freshman on the team. And they're going to walk him. So now we got runners at first and third with senior Cole Smith who's DHing for Ray Tucker. He's up at bat in the number five hole now. And Cole has struggled with injuries this year. He, he's, he spent the first month, six, maybe six weeks uh, recovering. Uh, it was his shoulder or elbow? It was his shoulder. Okay. He, had, uh, he did something to it last year and he had surgery in the off season. And uh, he was on his road to recovery, and uh, he still can't throw, still right. can't field, but as a he can base take, hit, he can take licks like that. And that's going to score Brad, uh, score Brady there. Two to two. Yes, we are in a very competitive ball game early here, which is if you've been following along all season, that's not happened a whole lot. 
And we're talking about the uh, one of the top teams in the state, uh, definitely the top team setting above everyone in our region with a yes. uh, 12-0 record. Um, I want to see if I want to go back to rankings and see if Max Preps. That's a ball to Jordan Martin, who is playing uh, right field for us here. He's batting in the six hole for us. It's, yeah, wouldn't you know it? They got the Lovett School, and Pace Academy, Thomasville, Callaway. Vide is down to number six. And I promise you it's, it's because of the, the loss, most of some of those losses, that tough schedule they play, that non region schedule. Um, but Lovett's number one. Your Jeff Davis defeated Lovett last year in the finals. I hated that. <laughs> uh, no, I'm serious. Uh, no, I'm, I'm not serious. I, 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 I pulled for Jeff Davis. Um, it was difficult to do, but. Um, well, with any team from the region, regardless yeah, you, you, of rivalries. You got to pull for them. You do. Yeah, regardless you, you of do. rivalries. Any team from the region, they deserve all the backing. That's why I'm glad. They make it that far. That's why I'm glad Pierce is not in our region, so I don't, yeah. have, I don't have to pull yeah. for them. You know. That would be, I think that would be just as hard to swallow as. Uh, Look oh, at there. that's an error. And that was a dis- and that's going to score a run. Yeah, that was simply a distraction by uh, the runner. I think he, he blinked, took his eye off the ball. Um, but but that's the case. It was no interference um, because he didn't touch uh, the defender. Uh, he was simply running the base in, in the correct base path. So uh, sometimes, you know, there can be uh, interference, runner interference, and they'll call an automatic out, but that's not the case. So uh, either way, Raiders take the lead of 3-2. to two Sure enough. Here in the bottom of the second inning. And I'm pretty sure the scenario goes that if, and I don't want to jinx anybody here. I don't want to jinx us for sure. But if we do steal a game from this series, it's a possibility we could run up to the number three spot, number three seed. Well, that's what we need to do, um, man. Let's uh, take this game tonight, and, and of course we got a lot of innings to go, you know, six more. Oh, yeah. But definitely um, a lot of game left. But we are in good shape right now. Only one out, two runners on. Pretty speedy runners now, and uh, we've moved to Hayden Taylor, our uh, playing first base force. And, and again, just like the the sun is a issue for uh, our boys on defense, it's, it's an it's more of an issue for visiting teams because they're yes. definitely not comfortable with it and used to it. It's it's that's a good curveball there. Wow, a big breaking pitch. It's tough. Uh, that's going to be two outs for the Raiders. Two on, three in. Uh, here in the bottom of the first. And that's going to bring up the twin Kale Taylor up the bat. They've got them sitting right underneath each other yeah. in the batting lineup. The pitcher is the one at, at the most risk of of injury simply because of his reaction time, you know, having to really pay attention to that ball coming off the bat with the sun back in his face. Yes. Uh, we've had a couple of them hit to us. Luckily, no injuries. Uh, the the two, we've I think it's three this year we've had hit to us. One of them hit Knox in the, in the foot. That was in the Swainsboro series, I believe. And then I know uh, – Ray's been on the mound a couple of times, and they've hit it to him. And uh, I know it's definitely not for the average person to get up there and try to try to throw the ball, and then somebody hits it right back at you, and you have to react to it. Another good curveball on that outside corner. It's probably going to end the inning, but nonetheless, the Raiders take the lead three to two. A, a great comeback inning. Um, you know, as it, it could easily have gotten down. We had a couple errors, a couple runs scored there in the top of the first. But, uh, yeah, we need to come out here and, and hold them. Three up, three down is what the doctor would order here. So, uh, we are going to take another quick break and be back in just a few moments on the NFHS Network, Power by Play on Sports, brought to you by BCTV Red Raider Broadcasting.
back here in the top of the second inning. Uh, three to two, your Raiders lead. Viday Indians, number one uh, team in our region at 12 and 0. I did not know that they swept uh, Jeff Davis. I had not looked at it. This ball was hammered in the right field. It's going to be tough. Yeah, just oh, to smoked it over the right fielder's head. Nothing he could do. Just got to get it in as quick as possible. Oh, we got it. Oh, we got him in a pickle. Uh oh. Yeah, that's right. You, you run him back, run him back. Just keep, keep, oh, yeah. Oh, gone. He just, he just flopped in the way. Out of the baseline. That's what he was called. Man. Because if you get too far out of the baseline, the umpire is going to call you automatically out. Yeah, he made a, a mistake there. I, I wasn't looking at the third base coach seeing what his signal was for him to hold up or come on. But, um, but yeah, that was a base running error there on a solid double by that I young mean, man. That joker was to the fence in the air. Yeah, he, he, yeah it was, he smoked it. And they put the bat on the ball pretty well so far. That's going to be a, a That's good a nice bunt, bunt here. There. Oh, he fumbled it. Yeah, I don't think he'd have made the play anyway. That was a base hit bunt there, I believe. Yes, uh, we, he would have risked. If he'd have made that throw, the way he was running, the risk throwing it down the line there, and he ends up at second or third. And, yeah, it was um, probably best that he did what he did there because that joker was pretty speedy. That was, um, I believe that was Cason Banks that just laid that bunt down. And, this is going to be Bryce Davis right here for uh, Vidalia. That's not their uh, starting quarterback's name, is it? What was his name? His name wasn't Bryce Davis, was it? I don't think so, I, but I may be wrong, too. For some reason, that name sounded familiar when I read it off like that. I know somewhere on this list they have a, what I've heard is a D1 commit pitcher. Yep, yeah, I've, I've heard he's. I believe that's the Spivey boy, ain't it? Is uh, that right? I think that is correct. To Notre Dame, is that right? That's what I think. That's uh, what I. It, I, it was last year, and, yeah. you know, I knew he had some right. elbow issues last year and wasn't able to see him here right. um, in that series. But, uh, but I say he throws the ball pretty well, low 90s. Yes. It's crazy how all these guys keep up with each other. Uh, I mean, it's they all talk to each other. They all know each other. They've all pretty much grown up playing ball together. Travel ball. A lot of them have, have, have played these different counties. Yeah. From different of, counties together. A lot of these guys. Like a big have, all-star team. Yeah, a lot of these guys have seen each other for a long time. But if, if, that's, if the Spivey boy is the one committed to a D1 college, he was the shortstop that made that error earlier that put us ahead. Uh, just throwing that out there. <laughs> <laughs> Knox hasn't seen the mound a whole lot this year. Uh, he, uh, I'm pretty sure he started the season at uh, third base, best yes. I can remember. And... Uh, they moved him to catcher, moved Jarney to, I mean, Arnie. We call him Jarney, but moved him to first base. Uh, but a lot of that was the missing piece was uh, Chance Ivy, who had some injury to deal with early in the season. Wow, ball hit sharply down that left field line. That's going to be trouble all the way to the fence. One run's going to score. Going to have a stand-up double for that young man, and it's going to be a tie ball game, 3-3. Three to three. With one out here in the top of the second. They're, they just got us back with the same thing that Brady did, just the opposite side there. That's a nice hit by that fella there. But, yeah, there's been a lot of moving around on this ball team. Uh, still in the last, last week of play, regular season play, and we still do not have a solid lineup that played last week. Yeah. And that's one of the challenges we've faced all season. And uh, injury at the beginning of the season, and then we started picking the pieces together, and then we got into the higher quality teams in the non-region, and uh, we come into region play. And yeah, you're talking coffee, Tifton. Yeah, I mean, uh, we played quality teams, teams that a 2A school should not, you know, you would expect that a 5A school beat a 2A school like they would. Sure. But 
I mean, we sh obviously we should be competitive because it's, at, at any sport you should be competitive. But uh, we had we had troubles early in the season, and then we got the region play, and things were looking up. We started off with East Lawrence, and we swept them. We had very very good uh, boost there, and uh, we moved to Jeff Davis, and Jeff Davis did what Jeff Davis does, and uh, then we went to Tombs, and we got a very competitive win that Monday. I believe it's on Monday. It, it was. Then we come back to the double header, and we kind of kind of fluked the first game and then come back and won the second game in a very competitive game there. That was a comeback win in that game. Then we moved to Swainsboro, and we had more stuff go wrong just when it was looking up. Tough place. Oh, great play by the right fielder. Uh-oh. And, man. That was a cannon. He's, <laughs> well, God, one good thing come from it. We, we determined this guy's got an Oh, arm. man. Wow, that was a throw right there. I, I, I can't. It's hard to believe we even had a throw there at home like we did. That was yeah, close. I'm telling you, uh, that was a nice. It's crazy. Right fielder air mailed third, <laughs> and and then uh, the but we did have a backup guy over there, and he he slung it home and and yep. made a good attempt uh, getting the guy out. It's four to two. Is that correct? Four to three. Four to. Th I'm sorry. Four to three. Four to three. I believe. Yeah, top of the second. Yeah, because they had one to. They had one to tie it up, right? And then they had the, that one. Got him. Boy, that yeah. was close, but that was a good play, good stretch uh, by the first baseman to end that inning. Um, but we relinquished the lead, like I said, four to three as we head to the bottom of the second. Maybe the Raiders, hopefully the Raiders can uh, continue to uh, put the bat on the ball and see what uh, what transpires. I want to thank our 2021-22 Athletic School Year um, title sponsors, audibly, and that would be uh, Family Vision Care. That's Dr. Hutto. McQuaig and Day, uh, Coley Electric and Plumbing Supply, Miss Lisa Coley and her fine staff, uh, Andy Cawthorn, Andy Cawthorn Auto Sales, uh, right down the road here. And last but not least, Burt CPAs. That's Mr. specifically Mr. Larry Taylor here in the Alma office. That's Burt CPA. Bottom of the third inning. Who we got leading off there, Caleb? This is the bottom of the second, Mr. Johnson. Come on. <laughs> yep, and we're going to the. I'm just making y'all stay sharp is what it is. That's right. We're going to the number nine hole, Aiden White. And uh, a lot of people have told me. Wait now. In, is this appropriate? <laughs> <laughs> a lot of people have told me in most cases that the number, high, the number nine hole is usually not the best batter in the world but i don't think in any case that that is that is true uh at least for this young man at least for him i, I know he works hard he works hard in the batting cages he works hard on the field uh he may not get the the breaks that the most of the elder players on the team get but i believe he is a pretty solid baseball player 
Well, I know he and his uh, parents would appreciate that. Did, did Miss White pay you to say that? No, she did not. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> no, she did not. Uh, two, uh, two teachers uh, or educators. Um, at, well, his dad's a counselor at the primary school. His mom is a music. Uh, she does some other things too there between the schools, but uh, yeah, uh, yeah, just a good young man. Um, and you're right. Typically, the the higher in the batting order you are in that seven, eight, and nine hole, you're you're typically not one of the better batters. That is what it is. Yep. But you're in the lineup for a reason, whether yes. it's defensively That's or um, or your attitude or whatever the case may be. Um, and uh, you know, certain there's there's strategy. Sometimes you move guys around and you. I, I've seen people put a, a flat-out leadoff batter in that nine spot, yeah. you know, because you never know when it, when that's going to end up being the uh, leadoff or just like that this inning or uh, the second batter coming back uh, to it. So, again, it's uh, right. a little bit of strategy there. But typically you put your first four best hitters at the top of the lineup and then you can you got a little, uh, little leeway there. That's right. I think that's ball number two in this – count here so we're back to the top of the lineup with jackson connor he struck out his first at bat knowing one of the lone one of the few seniors on this team uh two that's playing tonight one, one of, of two one of three that's a dink right out the center field be trouble and he's he, unable to make the play make and the jackson's play. gonna uh -oh. try to stretch it's gonna be close and uh, unable to make the play there's another error by i believe that short stop i was talking about <laughs> earlier not the d1 guy not the d1 guy surely not that was a nice play by Jackson there. It he, was. He was cutting it close, getting to that play, but he well, put the pressure on him. And good throw probably gets him, but he, yeah. he just – hey, let's roll the dice he here. He put the pressure on him, and he was definitely working on it there. And that's going to bring up uh, Jarrett Arney. Uh, I believe he's a junior. Is that right? He is. He is a junior. He is a junior. He didn't see a whole lot of the field last year. We had a pretty, pretty stout team last year, I believe. I didn't keep up with it very yeah. much, but he didn't see a whole lot of the field last year. Not a lot of these guys did. Many of them were eighth graders. A uh, majority of the team was eighth graders last year. And, and we got two or three eighth graders that's coming up this coming year yes, that, we do. that can make an immediate impact as well. And it's and it's good to see some of them eighth graders have been have been at the practices and they've uh, they're trying to incorporate themselves into this team already. And that's that's always a good sign to see the young guys. Wanting to take rolls already. Ball gets away from the catcher, and uh, Jackson's going to advance to third uh, with no outs. Runner at third. Good opportunity to tie this ball game up here with no outs and a runner at third. That catcher right there almost slid on my beautiful painting down there. Did you <laughs> see that? He was mighty close. <laughs> I don't believe uh, – I'm pretty sure what the guys were telling me, which, you know, coming from these guys, you know, they like to talk crap about every team they play. But uh, coming from what these guys were telling me, the Spivey kid, which if that's the one that's committed D1, is their best uh, their best pitcher. You and think? That's, <laughs> I mean, just saying, just connecting the dots here. Uh so I'm pretty sure it was what they told me it was him or nobody. Uh, they really didn't have anybody else besides him. Uh, they, that's what I've heard from them. But, you know, there's no telling how it really well, is. Well, to go, and I know top to bottom our region is not super strong, but, um, you know, he, he can only win one game out of all those series. So he, he's got five, probably five wins, and he'll have a chance to get six wins this week. Right. Of their tw – uh, he's probably got five wins of their 12. Right. And, uh, so, you know, that – it could go either way. Um, you know, they, they score runs. That's, That's true. You know, yeah, so – uh, Their bats have been hot early in this game with quality hits. It's just their uh, – their defense have been a little – a little uh, – Sketchy. Yes, yes. So we got uh, got Jason Guest on first. He's a freshman, uh, courtesy runner for yeah. Jared Arney. Run, so runners at the corner. Yes. No outs, and Brady Cothran at the plate, and he only one out. Excuse me, one out. He ripped one down uh, the baseline, the right field line for a triple. So they're going to be real careful throwing to this young man. 
Um, and it, it probably won't hurt their feelings if he actually walked. That would load the bases and give them an out at any, any bag, specifically the force at home. Um, but I'd be surprised if they give him anything to hit here. I hope they do. He makes a mistake. Like right there and hits it in the gap. Go ball. Ah. So oh, he we, dropped it. Oh, he it. dropped it. He dropped it. And, again, that's, and that's going to take – That's the sunshine. That's going to take the runner home. It's going and to that's going to advance all the runners. And that's going to put Jason Guest on third and Brady with a stand-up double there. And just a crazy scenario there. And that puts us back at 4-4 in the bottom of the second. And knocks Ledbetter up the bat here. I got a feeling this is not the game that Vidae anticipated coming over here and playing today. Not – I seen the look on that, that coach's face when they had that mound visit while ago. He wasn't he, real happy. He was, was not very happy. Ball hammered oh, down. Fair man, ball down the left. That. And 14 can That's go to – score another. Six. Two runs in there. Six to four. And Knox with a nice double play, that, nice double hit there. And that's a freshman, by the way. Yeah, he's he's uh, one of those athletes that we have called on the phone to make up the job, and he's done just that. He is uh, he has definitely filled the shoes because he has been put there. Six to four, still only one out runner at second. You know, and and hits that kind of stuff's contagious. You know, uh, oh, yeah. so it, it just like I said, it wouldn't surprise me if we don't. Uh, get a couple more hits here and score a couple more runs. This is the designated hitter, Cole Smith. He's got a pretty heavy bat on him when he gets a hold of one. And he's got a uh, he's got a base hit already to that yes, left side. Yes, he does. Yes, he does. It's been exci- it's been very exciting watching these guys play. Although the outcome was not in their favor in many games, but very exciting watching these guys play. Because just just because people get to see the games on the Tuesdays and the Thursdays and the Friday nights, that they don't get to see the work that goes in it before them, and uh, these guys work real hard. Another curveball. Sitting at one ball and two strikes on this count. See what this guy does here. Mm. Low in the strike zone. He couldn't pull the trigger. That's going to be strikeout number two for this young man on the mound. Uh, It's going to be two outs now here in the uh, bottom of the second inning. That's bringing up Jordan Martin. We know he can throw the ball. Let's see if he can hit it. I don't recognize Jordan as easily this year uh, because of his – Lack of his hair. Yeah, he I get his, lack of hair. He cut all his hair off. He did cut a good bit of his hair off. Wow. Ball was inside, but. Called strike. There's a good many of these uh, these umpires, you know, sitting up in the booth. You get to watch. Mm, that behind. ball was hammered down the left field. He caught that little, little quick on that curveball, hanging curveball. Not quite as tight. Raiders seeing the ball well. Uh, beautiful day today. Sl- slightly cool, actually, I would think, for this time of year. We've got a, had a high of 68, 70. Um, it's going to be cool, a little bit cooler before the game ends. Very strange weather we've had yeah, here lately. Yeah, two strikeouts there uh, in a row to end the inning. But the Raiders take the lead, 6-4, to four, as we head to the top of the third. We're going to take another quick break and be back in just a moment.
and that's going to bring us to the top of the third. We're going to start off with, uh, I believe this is Hughes, Hugh uh, Graham here, their catcher. And uh, we still got Knox Ledbetter on the mound. Everybody's still where they was to start the game. And that's a dink right over to shortstop. He fumbles it, but it's going to, well, it was going the right way, but that runner outrun that. So that's going to put the runner on on the first pitch thrown at the top of the third. It's going to move to their number four hitter, Ty Daly, that first baseman here. A bunch of these guys are uh, built pretty much the same on the Vidalia side. You can look out at the Bacon County side here, our home, to, uh, home side, and it looks like we've got a chart out there with all the staggering sizes we've got. With Jackson playing shortstop and Brady out in center field, and Jordan Jordan's pretty grown. He's out in right field, and the rest of the guys they're just getting there. Yeah, I, uh, I keep looking over at uh, uh, the Tucker kid. He, yeah, he <laughs> he's 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 small. You know, I'm not. It is what it is. Yeah. Um, You're blessed with what you. Well, with. this is not a big man sport. You know, especially high school ball. Yeah. Uh, it's, again, it's the size of your heart and your courage. And obviously the kid, he's got enough moxie as a freshman to get out there and uh, get it done. Sure enough, he's been out there a pretty good bit for a freshman. More than, not more than Knox, but more than any other freshman. Uh, him and Knox have been called to fill the shoes of uh, the empty holes here. And they've done the, jo they've done the job. Well, again, it just gives them valuable experience. Yes. Uh, they got three more years uh, to support, help support our Red Raider baseball program. Just a bit outside. Uh, Landon had to leave. Uh, I do a horrible job of keeping up with balls and strikes on the scorebook, so I'm going to keep you up to date audibly with the count. Uh, me or Caleb won, and it'll just be – uh, runs and innings here on the scorebook from this point forward. So I do apologize for that inconvenience. Uh, but if I try to do it, I just, yeah, I, I get lost. I, I, I'm, I'm too much of a fan. That's one of my problems about even <laughs> when I try to video stuff uh, anymore. Um, I get too caught up in the action, and, and you know, the camera's still pointing over here somewhere, and I'm, I'm watching, the, <laughs> watching what's going on at the other end of the field. Yeah. And somebody at home is trying to see their kid just score a touchdown or a goal you know and i'm yeah. jumping up and down so celebrating with everybody in the box and i'm like, oh man i gotta get on this camera <laughs> and that was a nice pitch there very much inside this uh the consistency with these umpires have been not, very odd not consistent i'm telling you <laughs> well i've always we see said a, we see a lot of the same ones in the region you know switching from town to town right but uh, the consistency between all of them have not been the same. And he made that. That what was a, a nice play by wow, Ray there. What a great play by Ray. As he kind of, as he turned, he kind of, as he stopped, he stumbled. And as he fell, as, by the time his butt hit the ground, he catches the ball. What a great play by the young man. That will give him some confidence. Uh, but what I was talking about the umpires, I've always said this. I said, and I, met, I actually said it one time they, after a softball game. They come up here. I said, you know, guys, y'all did a pretty good job. I said, all I ever ask from an umpire is if you to be consistent. Are you consistently yeah. good or consistently bad? Don't be both. You know, yeah. <laughs> you're, you're good one one end and you're bad another. But just be consistently good or bad for both teams. And then, you know, it usually works out in the end. Yes, it would be much better to have one, one either way. But, uh, yeah, I'm telling you, Ray's got just this – this coolness about him out there. He he can't quite make, you know, he, he can't quite make the super superstar plays that everybody expects out of players like that. But he definitely makes the consistent plays. Yeah, the Taylor boy there on, on first, he seemed to think he had him. Anytime you bring that ball up and show the umpire that you've got the ball, uh, he, he feels like that uh, we had an out there, a pickoff there. Um, but Very close. I guess not the case. One out here, top of the third inning. Still a 0-0 count as he sees the first pitch go to a strike there. 
Six to four, Raiders lead. Number 16 in the state, number one in our region. They took two from Jeff Davis at, at Jeff Davis's place. They took three total. Yeah, that's that. That alone is pretty impressive from this Vidalia team because uh, that was a young state championship team last year. They didn't gradu graduate a whole lot. That's correct. And uh, they were well, still – Well, you said it. They, they, Jeff solid. Davis does what they do. Yep. You know, they, they didn't have a great season last year. Um, but when they got to the playoffs, they just buzzed everybody yeah. down. And and I even kind of doubted that they would maybe even be, be able to beat Lovett just assuming Lovett was going to be the powerhouse that we anticipate right. from that private school that plays in double A. Um but, man, they took them down in two games. And, yeah, so that, that's three out of – really four, four – that's three state championships out of four seasons, I believe. Now, there was a season that COVID-19 or uh, 2020 when there was no championship. The season was canceled. But if you go back far enough, it's it's three out of four seasons they've won a state championship, which is pretty remarkable. Yes, that is – very good. That's it. Popped up. It's going to be a shallow left field. Nice play there Call by Kale Taylor. Oh, yeah. I think he had down. he had it long enough. Um, it was in the no. It, it was in the transition from his glove. Are you kidding me? He did not give that to him. I don't believe. Yeah, he's coming back to the dugout. Yeah, he. Ha I think okay. it was he was transferring yeah, yeah. the ball from his yeah. uh, glove to his throwing hand. For and, some reason, uh, I thought we had two outs there, and that was going to end the inning. But no, there were only one. Yeah, that really uh, that was a nice play there. Two very nice plays. Well, there's no you, you call a, a a pop fly in the outfield. You, you know, a standard pop fly like that was very similar. He had to he had to move a little bit. Usually is a can of corn, but I'm telling you, with the the way the sun is on this field at this time of the day, there's nothing easy out there. Two outs now, runner at first. Another. That's hit the center field. And Cawthorn's going to that's easy. land under it, make the play. And that's the first inning that uh, neither team has scored a run, which is good. Six to four, we head to the bottom of the third. Raiders lead by day Indians. We're going to be back here in just a moment. Bottom of the third, again, six to four. Raiders lead by Dale, you Indians. And uh, one of the Taylor twins is coming to the plate. Which one's that? This is Hayden. He's in the seven hole. And I uh, can't remember. He struck out last time, didn't he? He, he did. Yes. <clears throat> Sadly, he's one of the two twins that have not seen a whole lot of playing time this year. I won't say that's because it's his brother's any better than him but for the position he plays right there at first base we're right. at three deep at that position yeah. with uh with uh chance starting there early in the season and then we moved uh moved jarney out there uh you know just rotating pieces around but uh 
with Jarney's injury in the last series. He's getting the call, and I think he's done a great job here lately. Uh, there's a few games he's he's played in there. He's gonna take Nasty curveball is going to uh, strike Taylor out here. Uh, in, again, in the, in the bottom of third inning, going to bring his brother up, and that's uh, Kale. That's right. These two boys belong to uh, uh -oh. Dan and April Taylor. Dan, a former uh, chairman of the Board of Education, um, he has been a you know kind of pillar in our community for several years. Uh, for you know that uh, that regard, as well as a pastor, youth pastor, and now a full time pastor at uh, Nazarene. Mm. His wife uh, is employed by the Board of Education. Very great people in that family. Great people. Mr. Dan's actually doing that. Uh, he's on his journey for that marathon that he's doing. He's he's working his way up yes, to the, to the full-blown 26 he's, miles. He's huh? going to be the Alma Force Gump. <laughs> he's just going to start running one day and not stop. <laughs> I'm telling you, he's been working on that for a while. And, you know, if you follow him on Facebook, you already know that. Yeah. His progress has been... It's been great. It's fun to see somebody work at that. That's going up in that little Bermuda Triangle over there and let a right fielder make that play. I bring out, out out number two. Bringing up Aiden White, number nine hole back here again. That last inning, we kind of went through a couple of batters. We back at the. We did. We nearly, you know, nearly batted around. Uh, Almost. We went from number nine to number seven in that last inning. So, big cut there by White. Wow. Mm, uh, that wasn't even a good frame, and they still called it a strike. That was on the the, the White. A lot, sometimes, you know, a lot of times you'll see an umpire that likes an inside corner or likes an outside or inside or outside off the plate. Uh, this guy, he's he likes them both sides. That's, oh, my. That's another error by the <laughs> shortstop there. If that's the 5 -E kid kid that, that's possibly going to a D1 college, that's yeah. another error. <laughs> Golly. Uh, well, when you – that – that I'm going to be honest with you um, – and, I, and I'm not – again, I never try to throw kids under the bus, but that is a, just an example there of that was not very good uh, fundamental baseball there. He has got to slide. He's got to slide over and get his uh, and get his body in front of that ball and his, and his glove on the ground. Instead, he just kind of reached, eased over, reached for it, and was going to casually – he thought he was yes. going to make the play and make a casual yes. throw over to first, and yes. that was going to be it. And maybe that's what should have happened, but, yes. again, you got to, got to get over in front of that ball. One on now with two outs. And I will say, Mr. Johnson is not, uh, he's not talking about these kids in a demeaning manner. That's facing, that's mostly me uh, <laughs> doing that just because, you just can, because. You're a student I'm, and you can, yeah, <laughs> yeah, I'm trying to, uh, I'm helping him out over here. He's, he's not doing anything wrong, I promise. Well, you know, I'm always careful. As, you know, obviously, I am an employee of the school system, right. and they, all these coaches are right. my friends. I know them. And I know. I know right. all, most of these kids I've taught. So, you know, I'm trying to it's some, it's, you know, fine line between constructive criticism and you know, and maybe talking down. And, and I yes. never would do that deliberately. Uh, you know, but sometimes I will question uh, these coaches and some of the decisions that they make, and that's going to uh, end the inning. Uh, four up, three down for the Raiders uh, as we head to the. Uh, top of the fourth inning but uh but again so i will question some stuff I, I one of the last games we uh commentated i questioned why he held up a runner at at third uh in a game where you know we we really maybe should have pushed the button there and i i, I told him i did and that next morning uh, we have duty on the same hall and coach Kelly was he said hey, that's why i did it. i said oh i didn't know okay perfect yeah. i understand so uh, that's what it's about but we're gonna take another quick break here and honor our sponsors we'll be back in just a moment
we're going to move to the top of the fourth here after our uh, first full inning of no runs scored right there in the third inning. Going back to the top of the fourth here. Nice pitch by Knox there. Uh, nice hit to the third baseman. Oh, he won't be fast enough to make that play. That's going to bring up number 13, Kaysen Banks for Vidalia. Raiders are still holding that 6-4 to four lead at the top of the fourth with uh, – Very good by day a team here. We're playing as Mr. Johnson and myself have said already. Uh, Side pitch on that one. And the by day at third base coach has called time. All right. I stepped away just a second. What we got going on here? I got a runner at first. Not a whole lot so far. We uh runner got on first there. Uh our third baseman kinda bobbled the ball a little bit and he outrun it. These are some speedy guys on this by day side. As a whole. Maybe expect to see a bunt right here to, to, to advance this run, a little small ball. I've been waiting on it, but I've not seen it yet. He's only threw him one pitch, and that was high out, a very way outside uh, ball. And that might have been a, a, a throw out. Sometimes you do that to bait the, the batter just to kind of see maybe what he's going to try to do, if he's going to square the bunt, give the defense an indication. He may be swinging away. Never can tell these days. And there's there it that. Is. Huh? He's going to make that play that time. And that's a. Oh, boy. Oh, man. It's going to be all right, though. Oh. First baseman throws it away. We escaped trouble on that one. But uh, he's trying to force an extra out there. We do get the, the uh, routine out there at first. A good good play there on the bunt. Uh, Very nice play. To advance the runner to second. He's in scoring position now with one out here. Again, at the top of the fourth. And that brings us to their number two. Their uh, center fielder, number 20, Bryce Davis, who, again, for some reason, I feel like is maybe, could have been their starting quarterback last year. I'm, I'm not now, sure I thought that. their quarterback was African-American kid. No. He was, he, he was a, a, a white was, kid? Yes. Okay. Just just because I'm questioning, I'm going to be on the going down the rabbit hole. I'm about to figure it out. <laughs> This is only the second time we've seen him in this game, ain't it? Or is this the third time around? For I think this Vidalia? is the third time around for them as well. Big cut there by number 20. It is, I believe, yes. Bryce Davis was there starting. Uh, oh, can't get the call. I guess that was a little too far outside or low. I don't know. He but, was their starting quarterback. Okay. Well, you and he smarter is, than you look, man. He is, uh, I'm pretty sure I heard back during football season two, he is also committed to a D1 college. He's committed to Navy. Wow. He's going to be going big. playing football for Navy. He's that, not a baseball commit. but Right. That's awesome. We'll That's serve, another nice strike there. Serve our country as a soldier as well as uh, it's a fine education up there in Annapolis. Yes. Uh, that's a big accomplishment to get accepted into one of the uh, war one schools. Of military schools there. Mm -hmm. uh, but, yes, that's that's what I've heard. Uh, My uh, – oh, yep, going to be a stolen base, a no throw by the catcher. Strikeout for Knox. Yep, that's going to be two outs. That's big uh, there. 
uh, two outs now, runner at third. Uh, my brother-in-law, Thomas Taylor, uh, lieutenant commander, at least that was the last rank that I know he had. Um, he had spent some time all over the world, but a uh, long stint in Okinawa, Japan, lastly, and then they, they've moved to uh, uh, up to Virginia, where the Annapolis, where he is uh, doing some teaching and doing some uh, logistic work for uh, the college. He uh, he was actually the last two years responsible for um, organizing, planning, and uh, the uh, Army Navy game, as yep. far as where the, the players, the Navy team, where they were, how to get there, and this, that, and the other. So it was pretty pretty cool. Master Johnson, fun fact of the day. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Old ball hammered in the center. That's got a. Right out to the yes, heavy sir. steady hand of Brady. Very yeah. rare that he misses plays like that. I'll tell you what, that's a, that's a pretty good inning there by the Raiders. Um, you know, giving up a base runner or two and then uh, not allowing any runs. 64, we're heading to the bottom of the fourth. Again, we'll take another quick break, catch our breath, and we'll be back in just a few moments. We're going to start off the bottom of the fourth with Jarrett Arney, our number two hole hitter. I believe, yes, another scoreless top of the inning for Vidalia there. First pitch called strike in the bottom of the fourth here. Another breaking ball there. Uh, this kid's got some nice movement on his breaking pitches. And uh, it's called strike two. Way up in the air for ball number one. And uh, me and Mr. Johnson were talking off air earlier. Uh, Wait now. <laughs> the, the, Raiders, <laughs> the Raiders were... The, the Raiders are now, I believe, in the scenario that we are dependent on other teams to make us, to be able to put us in the playoffs. Uh, well, tip, well, we're going to be in the playoffs. I think we're guaranteed, if I'm not mistaken, we're guaranteed four seed. I'm not sure because if, if Toon somehow sweeps uh, Swainsboro, I think, I think it. The scenario. All right, let me look again. I, w I was paying attention to our our scenario of getting to the three seed, but you might you might there's a, it's a possibility I'm wrong and you're right. I'm just a slight possibility. Uh, so let's look right <laughs> here. Just a very slim one. But I know if I'm, I'm pretty positive. No, you're right. You're right. If yeah. if if we get swept and Toombs wins, if Toombs, two ball games, yeah, it will not be good. Which no, if they win two. We'll put we'll have the head to head on them, right? Nope, because if if 
if they win two, that's going to give them six wins and us only five. Gotcha. So it doesn't matter if we gotcha. got the head-to-head on them. Gotcha. If they have one more win than us, um, gotcha. they're, they're going to get in. So you're you're exactly right. So we need to be uh, – We are still relying on uh, – unless we steal a game here, and that was a fast – Yeah, but by, by winning a game, I, I wonder if, if it – you know, us us taking a game that guarantees it guarantees us four seed. I'm pretty sure it guarantees the four seed, but puts us in the fight for the three seed. Okay, all right. And uh, that was a very fast three up, three down for Valdez well, there. As the Raiders are going to take the this field is here. A, just a, a good life lesson for us. Maybe we should have done a little more homework before we <laughs> <laughs> figured all this out on paper, yeah. so we could tell the folks at home a little easier. We're going to take another break here. As again, that was a real quick end as we go to the uh, top of the fifth. And uh, this game's moving along finally, and we'll we'll go from there. Be back in just a moment. Top of the fifth by day innings. Indians uh, trail six to four to your Raid Raiders. Knox still on the mound. And you, you said that uh, Coley may have mentioned uh, we, we, he would pitch a few guys tonight. I, I mean, you know. You think that might have had anything to do with uh, I don't sit in the coaches' room in the coaches' meetings, but uh, I thought I thought I had heard that. He had told several of the guys to be ready to hit the mound today okay. because he was he was anticipating throwing a lot of guys uh, just to see how they did, just to determine the rest of the week. Uh, now, I'm, I was told um, that our – yeah, I think he's our number one pitcher, Ivy, is yeah. is not available. Uh, I did not travel with them to Swainsboro uh, Thursday night, but they said, they told me that – a uh, lump or, or some type of like hematoma looking thing come up on his elbow. Oh, I got you. And uh, so they had to pull him from that from that game. He did start that game. They had to pull him early, but um, uh, he is not available for this game. Ball hit sharply into center field. It's going to be a base hit for the Indians as he leads off this top of the fifth. But, yeah, Ivy is not available for this game. I don't believe he'll be available for the series, which is uh, not good for us, Ben. He is he is our best pitcher. He's young. He's just he a sophomore, but he's young. he's built like a, a man, too. Now he's about 6'3", six, six, pushing 6'4", six, over 200 pounds. He's, he looks like the prototypical pitcher. He's, his hips uh, and legs, a lot of, uh, a lot of size there. Um, and that's where – uh, these pitchers generate a lot of their their power. Uh, yes, he is very good, uh, very accurate. He's got a lot of force behind him, and just a sophomore. Uh, all of these guys hit the weight room. Coley is Coach Coley is very, very uh, in the belief of hitting the weight room. He thinks that uh, all athletes should be, as all athletes should, uh, they should be strong. 
they should be built. And uh, it's taken him a while. He's I'm pretty sure he's only been the head of the program for, what, six years now, four years? This is, I believe this is his fourth year. Yeah. He's not been here very long, but it's taken him a while for these to get these baseball players to buy into the weight room. And a lot of these guys have, and a lot of these freshmen who – he was who were sixth graders when he first moved here. They've uh, they've bought in, and he's building the program just like it should be. And you know, even though even though we look at Ray and Ray Tucker out there, and he's a little bit smaller than the rest of them, well, he's, he, he's still working out with the big yeah, guys. Yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, I think Coach Goldie's doing a great job. Like I said, I get to be a. I get to get a. Uh, I think he. Are you getting a kickback for saying all these good things I'm, for his no, I'm little extra you, money? No, I'm, I'm not getting paid anything. <laughs> I get the. I get a little inside peek. Uh, Coach Coley approached me earlier in the in the year about helping him maintain the field a little bit and helping him do a little things and. Uh, Ball's gonna be out of play. We've got uh, state playoff tennis tomorrow. Uh, if you can come by and watch it, uh, 2.30. And I'll, I'm going to tell you, I, I can't even pronounce those names. But I get them mixed up. If I try to, uh, I'll, I'll pull it up on my, my calendar here. Uh, two, two schools out of Augusta is coming to place. Two different teams, our girls and our boys teams, are two seeds, and they will be playing at the same time, which is a little, thought a little odd at the time, but, you know, it is, is, what, it is, is what it is. Those two schools are from the same district. Obviously, and uh, they're they're just having trouble. Simply, they're just having trouble with getting bus drivers and and and, th and buses and this and that and the other. So, they're going to charter a bus with the two schools are going to come together. Really? Um, yeah, that's what I was told by Coach Bordeaux. I have a little insider there. Yeah, thank you very catch much. You. <laughs> um, but uh, <laughs> uh, but anyway, I'm going to pull up the names of these schools that will be playing. I know the boys are playing a school that's got like seven words in the name. That's what I'm telling you. I got to I got to look it up here. I haven't even heard who the girls uh, were playing. Here it is. Uh, Chuck Woodall, our athletic director, does a good job of providing us with a calendar. Wow, that ball looked like it was there. Very um, close to turning uh, to getting to there. Uh, our third baseman didn't decide to take the lead runner there. He took the easy out at first. He's uh he's done that a lot this season. He's took the easy out at first, and that runner thought about going to third. But all right, two teams. The the girls will be facing Johnson Augusta, Johnson of Augusta, and the boys. Here you go, Richmond County Technical Career Magnet. Yeah, that sounds like a Baptist church in South Georgia with <laughs> six names. Uh, Richmond County Technical Career Magnet School. Um, that's they're they're the number three seeds respectively. And they'll be coming to face your Red Raiders tomorrow at two thirty. We will be broadcasting live. Um, you know, with tennis, it's, it's it's very different from here. You can't set up a camera and see everything. Um, I'm going to attempt to have about four cameras that we'll be switching back and two from. Um, the number one singles, uh, number one boys and number two boys singles will be on camera, and the number one number two girls singles will be on camera. Um, but playing at the same time will be. Uh, the number number one doubles boys and girls uh, competing on on courts uh, three on either side. So, uh, giving updates and that sort of thing. But that's where we we stand with that. It is nice that we have uh, we do actually have a nice uh, tennis facility. Have enough courts to hold. That's right. Two game two matches like that at the same time. This is number 11, Ty Daly, back at bat for Vidalia here. And uh, he's got a 3-0 count with one out, runner at second. Big That's cut. a strike there. Nice pitch by Ledbetter. He's still holding pretty strong at five. Uh, there's not a lot of guys this season for our team that's been able to go, go innings for a while. Ivy's been about the only one that's uh, went a ways. Knox is doing a great uh, job here. Ball is hammered in the right center. Just gets down in front of Brady. He's going to get it back in quickly uh, to Jackson. Holds the runner at third. We've got runners at first and third out in the corners. One out still. Six to four, more importantly there. Um, got to get an out here somewhere, even if the run scores. Uh, 
double play would be, you know, that's the pitcher's best friend, and that would be pretty awesome. All this. it takes is that one ground ball to shortstop or second. And it's pretty pretty sure there. Gonna test him at first with that there. From from my point of view, I don't know what how you see it. You know, you see it a lot better than I do. But uh, from my point of view, the first first base runner there does not look like he's having. He's got as much of a lead as the other guys do. No, he he doesn't. Compared to the other guys we've seen, uh, he's standing right there at the corner of the grass, a little bit inside, and the rest of the guys are. Usually got their other foot at the corner of the grass. Yeah, sometimes, you know, we it, 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 it's a distraction for the pitcher. I think he I think he really needs to concentrate on this batter. Um, I don't think the guy at first is normally a uh, a base stealing threat. Um, so he needs to concentrate on hitting his spot here uh, with the batter. Uh, he has not squared the bunt at this point yet. There's only one strike. Um, that's a possibility for a squeeze. That's and straight and up that's in the air. what we want is a pop up. Maybe Arnie can find it. He's having trouble. Oh, and the pitcher Knox makes the play wow. there. What? The, and he caught it right in the right uh, in the palm. The palm there, yeah. right, or actually a little less than the palm. I can't think of that area. Barely the, squeezed the, the it. name of but an outs and out at this point. Two outs. What a great, uh, p great pitch to start with, and a great play there by Knox, helping himself. Um, two outs now. Number 14, I'm doing a poor job tonight of I don't, I'm not keeping a book here uh, as to what uh, 14 has done this evening. Um, I'm not 100% sure myself. Uh, pretty much can bet at the end of this game, though, most of them will have one hit the way they've been hitting here. Right, yeah, the way they game. swing the bat, yeah. I mean, they uh, anything that looks like it's pretty close, they're going to swing on it. Well, the, the, the shadow net above us is finally doing something for the first baseman and the right fielder. <laughs> it's helping them out. Right fielder still got his uh, glove up it, in the air it, trying to shade. It has yet. You know, it, it never once helped uh, right up the middle, which is what it was uh, designed, designed for. for. Yeah, that setting sun, even though the shade is over, the right side of the field. Ball is, that might be foul territory. Yeah, it's it's out of play and hit they, the top of the fence over there. Right fielder made a good hustle, but there was no way he was going to make that play. And that's Jordan, isn't it? Yes, that is Jordan. Yes, he uh, he covered some ground on that ball there. Wasn't a lot he could do at yeah, the top just, of the fence and jump back in, but he was definitely there to make the play. No balls, one strike, two outs. Raiders uh, trying to get out of a little jam here. Runners at the corner. Again, a lot of attention being placed on the runner at first. This is Vidalia's uh, second baseman, Kevin Cox. It's a good pitch. In on the, the hands. Uh, Knox has, has got him set up here in an 0-2 count. He can throw whatever he wants here. I I would I think inside there was if he can bring it inside enough. You just don't want to hang nothing. This nice. guy looks like an aggressive hitter. Sorry for my mistake. It's a 1-2 count. Oh, is it? That. Okay, 1-2. Which still pretty Either much way, gives it's him still freedom. A, still a pitcher's count. Yeah. That's right. Gives him freedom here. He, he throws that one. That's going to second. Shortstop a mint. He's and not going to make the play. Runner's going to score with a bobble by the shortstop. Now to bring it to six to five. Runners ah. on second and first. That was a hard hit ball. Yeah, well, it was deep. Uh, he was playing deep, and um, I'm not sure exactly. We, we, we didn't need to be in double play depth at that point, but uh, if he doesn't bobble, it's going to still be a close play. Oh, yeah. Uh, 
So we got runners at first and second now. The score is five to six. Raiders still lead, but again, we want to try to get out of this inning. This ball is hammered to left field, and that's going to be trouble. Uh, that one bounces to the fence. It's going to score one. This game's going to be tied. Six tied. to six. Yeah. Yep. Tied six to six here. That was a first pitch whack there. Yeah, and a lot of times that's what you're looking for. Uh, you, you're coming up. Uh, I, I've always liked a first pitch uh, hitter. Yeah. You know, the, a lot of times the, the pitcher's just trying to get a get ahead in the count. And if you get the pitch you, you like and want, which that was it, looks like we're prop. You think we're getting a – trying to see here. No, this is anybody just anybody trotting in. That's just a just that's a, just a Coach Mac Mallon visit. Okay, uh, he's just, just giving a words of encouragement. Uh, asking you never Lisa. you never ask the kid if you want to come out because they always say no. I'm yeah. good, you know. His arm's about to fall off. No, I don't want to come out. You know? <laughs> uh, he's just loosening him up a little bit, telling him to don't worry about the two runs and got to move it on. Six to six, two outs here in the, uh, again, the top of the fifth inning. Yes. Knox has done a great job, I feel like, even though he, he did. Uh, I won't say he did it, but well, even though as a side we have gave up two runs here in the top of the fifth. Uh, well, it's you look at it, I think that is uh, probably our third or fourth error. And, um, that's hit the first base. He bobbles that's going to be that trouble, well. too. He makes the out. Wow, what a play by the pitcher. That saves the extra run there. Knox made a great play there. Uh, That's two plays this inning that he he helped himself. It's going to be tied. Uh, But we've had several errors that have kept us, kept innings going and and, uh, unearned runs. And they they just got to kill you. So they've got a couple unearned runs, and and we do too. So this game probably should be somewhere around uh, three to three, four to three. Uh, one way or the other uh, in that case. But we're going to take another break here on the NFHS Network, powered by Play on Sports, brought to you by BCTV Red Raider Broadcasting. Bottom of the fifth inning, the Indians were able to tie this game back up six to six. Uh, a couple hits, a couple errors, a couple runs. And the Raiders are going to see if we can't scratch out another lead here. Oh, I, 
I thought you were trying to get us both something to eat. <laughs> Golly. I'm sorry. Uh, no, I sent uh, Caleb down there to ask about some food, and I put my he- headphones back on, and the music's still going, and the game's starting to play. And, I mean, the umpire didn't turn around and say nothing. He, he surely didn't. Usually he'll look, he maybe point or something, but coach didn't come out. I, I think they were just going to keep on rolling with it. <laughs> oh, man. Well, I appreciate this, Caleb. I, you didn't want nothing? I, I got know. a Snickers bar. Oh, so you didn't want the French fries, huh? No, nah, I'm good. You keep talking, I'm going to eat a bite. <laughs> well, uh, our first batter there was Cole Smith. He, uh, pretty sure he went three strikes and he was out. And that's bringing up Jordan Martin here. He takes a lick to right field. He's going to field that. It's going to be out number two on the inning. Here at the bottom of the fifth, and it's a tie ball game, six to six. By the Tagged on two runs right there in the top of the fifth. But still, uh, tie ball game with this good of a team. That's all you can ask for here. Very competitive match so far. You're exactly right. That, that's what you say. We just want to be competitive. You know, you, you know you can't win every ball game every year. And we know we've struggled a bit this whole season with um, injury, with – you know, a few other things that's that's plagued us, and uh, and and experience. And that's the that's the type of play you would expect from a D one player. There, that's the shortstop makes that. Throw. That was pretty smooth. Not gonna lie. That, that was, was <laughs> that was the casual one you're looking for, and that was a pretty quick three up, three down by the by day Indians. And uh, we're gonna head to the top of six. Take another yeah. break. Be back in a moment. Now currently going into the top of the sixth. What was I not loud enough for you? Mr. Johnson's got his headset off at the moment. And he's uh, grubbing down on some on some good concession stand food. And I'm trying to get it as fast as I can without choking. Another error by our freshman second baseman puts a runner on first for Vidalia. As we face their leadoff hitter one more time, uh, Bryson Witted, I believe is how you say his name. He's got a, his name is White with a D at the end of it. So. It's either Whited or Witted. Yeah, <laughs> I mean. Still Knox Ledbetter on the mound uh, looking for this. Maybe a complete game here. Maybe not. May see a change this inning. You never know. We do know that Coach Coley always has a plan. 
along with his other assistants, uh, Coach Tyre, Coach McDonald, who we seen earlier make a bound visit, and Coach Beecher. Great group of guys coaching these young men. Man, I still think you're getting paid to say all that stuff. <laughs> uh, ball gets by Jared Arney there, and the runner advances to second. Knox is not doing horrible, uh, like I said, plenty of times. I keep repeating it for some reason, but he's not seen a whole lot of the mound this year. He's been behind the dish most of the time. Well, I can uh, tell you this. He's already he's pitched well enough to win this game tonight. Yes. You know, it's going to take our defense and, and hit, make you know, score a couple more runs. But he's he's he has pitched well enough to win this game, and that's, you know, that's, that's all you can do. It kind of makes me wonder if they maybe aren't playing with an extra bit of motivation from what happened earlier in the day, and a lot of Bacon County people will, will soon realize if they don't already know what had happened earlier t today. I mean, a little fender bender. Um, after minutes minutes before we're all supposed to be at the field. Uh, no one was uh, majorly injured. There was some. There's gonna be some bumps a, and bruises. A couple yeah. gonna be maybe one or two gonna be sore, but uh, but. They there, there's when, there's at least one that's not playing tonight, just yes. uh, out of caution. And that's going foul. Probably going in the creek over there. Behind. But he, he was checked out and released uh, at the hospital. Yes. So, again, just uh, everybody appears to be okay. It's just uh, one of them things, the accident that happened. Yep. And I know uh, a lot of people tend to, tend to thrive when adversity hits and – if, if any fans of Bacon County would say that's not the case with this team, as another wild pitch goes by, the runner advances the third. Uh, any Bacon County fans would say that that is not the case with this team, with the season. The season opening how it did seemed like we would never get our first win. and But this team, they did uh, overcome a lot of adversity. Uh, Garrett got hurt in the, I believe it was the uh, right before the scrimmage, like maybe the week before the scrimmage. And uh, that scores a run for Vidalia. And that they put them back in the lead. Yeah, they, they had a 2 nothing lead in the <clears throat> top of the first, and then we re, re, we took that lead pretty quickly there in the bottom of the first and, and held on mm -hmm. to it till that point. And now it's 7-6. Uh, to six. Now we see Coach Coley coming out, making a trip to the mound. He's clean shaven. I, I know that's him now. <laughs> um, all those guys got some beard. I, I had not seen Coach Tyre in a while. I don't, he's got a baby face still. I don't know if he can grow a beard. But, uh, excuse me, but he, uh, I'll tell you a story. He saved my life, Coach Tyre. Uh, he, I, well, he saved me from, from being uh, being hurt pretty bad. Yeah. You want to hear us? We got a little time. It was about uh, – Probably four four years ago now or so, <clears throat> I was I was actually coaching some basketball, and it was a, just a few hours before a basketball game that night. I had committed a video in a wedding mm -hmm. at the Nazarene Church where Dan T uh, Taylor's preaching right now. Right, and uh, it was uh, Bentley Carter's daughter's. It was either his daughter's wife, uh, wedding or his son's wedding. I can't remember, but anyway. Right. So I'm I'm there at a wedding and. And I'm and the little, that little chapel's not real big, and it was full of people. And they had candles in each window. You know, the mm -hmm. lights were dim. Well, I, I was over uh, on the edge of the church, waiting for the, the you know everybody to come in. I was going to read the video. I had a camera in my hand, and, and I was at my back back. I was backed up to that uh, that window. Well, there was a air flowing right underneath me, air conditioned vent, and evidently it kind of flamed the fire, and it caught my shirt on fire. Really, and it, it, you know, and I, this expression, I'll never forget it, because <clears throat> Coach Tyre was, and obviously the people at home can't see my face, but he was like, "Hey, you're on fire," <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, "Huh?" He's like, "No, you're on fire." You know, he grabbed my arm, turned me around, and he and he he started patting. You know, yeah. Uh, and it wasn't again, it wasn't horrible. Could have been. Um, Could have been bad. But you know, by the time he patted it out, I was unbuttoned the shirt to get it yeah. off. But it, and if I hadn't had a t-shirt underneath, an undershirt. Um, you know, it would have most. It would definitely have burnt my skin, but it didn't. I didn't even have a singe. But I want to thank Coach Tyre for potentially saving my life, or at least from a lot of bodily harm there by catching on fire at a church. <laughs> Not too many people know that. That's a uh, Johnson uh, fun fact number two for there, the day. There you go. <laughs> now you know the rest of the story. And uh, 
Coach Coley did come out, and that's usually when we see our pitching changes is when he uh, makes his visit to the mound. And we're putting uh, Jarrett Arney at first. You know, he, he took a took a lick in the Swainsboro series, not a serious injury, just a little little nick to the wrist. And uh, we've put Ray in, usually a pretty consistent guy. He's not super strong. You know, he's still a freshman. But he pounds the zone. And uh, that leads to a lot of good things. And it looks, it looks like, to me, we've got the two Taylor twins at left and right field. And Brady splitting them in the middle out there. And uh, we've moved Jordan to second. Jordan usually plays shortstop. I'm, I was kind of wondering why we didn't make the switch there in, in the middle of the infield with uh, uh, putting Jordan over to the shortstop and putting – Connor. Who's that in left field now? That is still Kale. We've okay. moved Hayden out to right field. Uh, like I was saying, I believe Jordan did start shortstop early in the season. That's a runner. That's going to be trouble. Wow. Are you kidding me? Uh, oh, what a play. Are you kidding me? Nice there by Jordan. Jordan. I thought that was a C and I single. I actually thought the ball was going to be slower than it was, and that was going to be the problem. But Jordan made a fantastic play there. That was a D1 move. That was very nice there. Don't jinx him like that. <laughs> we know how the other guys played already. We don't need this to start. Hey. But the runner did advance to third. Uh, change that count. I'm pretty sure it's one out. Uh, it, yes, I will clear the count for you. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you already left the music on, you know, too long. No, you did that. <laughs> you sent me down to get you a burger. And that then was you not my responsibility. <laughs> hey. Oh, man. Ball almost got away from Knox Ledbetter, who was previously on the mound, now catching where he's been most of the season. He started out at third base, but uh, they quickly moved him back there to be the guy behind the dish. Uh, so a few changes come with that pitching change, and that's up for the first baseman's liking, just barely outside the fence over there. But, uh, yeah, we've made some changes here. Still 7-6. to six. Vidalia did take the lead. And they've got a runner on third. You, hate to, you always hate to see one advance from anywhere past first. And many of y'all maybe could have heard that. That was Mr. Johnson's rapper, Craigslet, over there from that hamburger he just devoured. <laughs> oh, man. But, yeah, Ray's. Ray's a freshman. Uh, he he can't, you know, as most freshmen, he's still young, got a young arm. He's not quite to the velocity that uh, these seniors are or maybe even Ivy is. But uh, Ivy's case is special. as another run scores there. You go to eight to six. But uh, Ray really pounds his own, and that, that really helps a lot. Clear the count again for you. I'd hate to mess you up. <laughs> <laughs> mm. That was a check at first, I believe. Uh, they love to hold that runner on at first. Definitely don't want him advancing. And this is number 11, I believe. Uh, that pitch is inside for a ball. But, yeah, this is – if if this game somehow does come out to be this close of a score, you can't be anything but happy for these guys being this competitive with this good of a ball team. And that's hit out to right field. Should be a can of corn with the sun down. And that's going to be uh, out number two. Going to throw it into the infield, hold that runner on first. We're looking at escaping this in and sort of a – this is a – stinky part of the day when it comes to the lighting you're it's sort of what you call a twilight the lights are on here uh but the sun is, is set behind the trees but 
you know, it's it's still a little dim. That's what you would call it, that in betweener. Um, so I hate, I don't like driving in these conditions. Um, that, that thirty <laughs> minutes before it, you know, it gets really dark, um, where your headlights because, really don't help that much. And that's just because you're getting old. That's probably true too. You know, I had to make a trip last night. Um, things we have to do for our kids. You know, Sarah, she's in Brunswick. Right. She graduated from college in about three weeks. Well, that's but good. her car, I was on the phone with her yesterday afternoon, and she, and she calls, and, and, I'm, and I'm talking to her, and, and she's she like, oh, what's wrong with my car? I'm like, well, I don't know. <laughs> she's like, well, it, it started skipping, or and ultimately it was skipping, but it was vibrating with her is what she described. I said, well, what were you doing? She said, well, I just changed lanes. I said, well, I don't think that caused it. I said, how fast are you going? She said, I don't know, about 30, 35 miles an hour. I said, well, slow back down below that and speed back up and sure enough it did it again at about 30 35 miles an hour and i was like oh my goodness so it, it did that and actually got a little worse uh, at different rpms as until she, she got back to her place of living and and i sat there and chewed on it a while so long story short i, I hope and prayed that all it was was it was a firing issue with with some plugs and and or coal oh it's ball it's hammer Lord. that might be trouble off the wall. Very close to being out of there. And one runner is going to score. It's going to be a stand-up double. It's going to add another run. It's going to be 9-6, to six, the Indians. And, I, and, again, I said earlier, I don't throw coaches under the bus or players or anybody. I, I do question, and I will ask. I'm going to ask him tomorrow and see what his thoughts were. I would, I don't, I, I'm, I would like to know why, you know, he's uh, not that – uh, this Tucker kid isn't capable, but he just – why wouldn't he brought in a pitcher with a little more experience right. um, when we're still in the game? It's a tie ball game. Um, but the kid comes in, you're right, he throws strikes. But it, he's throwing it right over the plate, and these guys can hit the ball. Um, and they've, you know, like I said, they've now scored a couple – they scored one on uh, – a couple, you know, obviously on Knox there at the end, and then they've scored a couple more here on Ray, but uh, but anyway. Which that, that also goes to lead. Uh, you could have made the change coming into this inning. You could have took Knox out last inning, made the change with somebody fresh from the sure. bullpen sure. Uh, just to go start him. Instead of instead of giving Knox the chance to come back out here and pitch again, you could have just went immediately to a new guy. <clears throat> again, runner at second. This ball's going to be chopped. going to be trouble mm. for the third baseman. That's, That's a long a run. run. Yeah, that was a that was smart, smart play there by 23. Uh, eat that ball. Um, that so, ball was almost just as slow as the bunts have been. That's just a just an infield hit. Nothing you can do. That's those types of things frustrate uh, coaches, the pitchers, everybody. To finish my story real quick. Um, I uh, it's a firing issue. Yeah, and I was hoping that's what it was. I called uh, called a, a friend of mine. He married. He's actually married to my cousin, and and asked him a couple questions. Told him the symptoms, and he does a lot of mechanic work on the side. Um, he said, "Yeah, that's what it sounds like to me." He said, "Hey, you want me to ride over with you?" I said, "Yeah, you can ride over with me." So we 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 pile up about six thirty. I go by the store and get some plugs, and uh, it's four cylinders, Kia Soul. Yeah, and uh, and they had one had actually two solenoids. Uh, uh, the you know the boot that goes over uh that goes down in the engine over the over the uh uh the plug and uh, that I didn't know which one I didn't I couldn't remember which uh liter the car was it was a 2.0 liter or 1.6 and it made a difference so I bought got both of them the, the, they had one of each so we drove to Brunswick put the computer on it he had a little plug the computer in turned it on yeah. check engine light and it said and that's what it said third cylinder was not firing or or firing error yeah. So we changed the plug and tried that. Didn't fix it. Drove it down the road, same thing, changed, and then changed the coil on it, and that fixed it. So a $120 fix, you know, was not too bad. A little bit of time. Drove back. Got home about 11 last night. But uh, and Why did I tell that story? Uh, I don't even remember. We were talking about kids or something. Yeah, something. I, I You know, just whatever. <laughs> but anyway, runners at the corner. I guess she just felt like throwing another Johnson fun fact out there again. <laughs> That's number three. I'll quit. Okay. I made a trip to Brunswick last night from my youngin. All right. Oh man, uh, I wasn't one hundred percent sure how we got on that. And it was running like a sewing machine now. So yeah. we went ahead and changed the other three plug, other two more plugs. One of yeah. them we couldn't. You know how they, you've done a little mechanic work, I'm sure, on oh, the yeah. side. You and your dad, and that going on top of the motor, it, it had something to do with fuel injection. Um, 
couldn't I couldn't get that boot off to put the other plug in, and I didn't want to take what was on top of the motor out of the way. So anyway, changed three plugs and one boot. Oh yeah, and uh, it's running running. The fine. little Japanese made cars anyway, I'm just uh, aggravation. Uh, I've been real pleased with the car, and uh, but you're right, it, it's it, they they make them now to where you just about have to take you, them. You somebody. can't you can't yeah. mechanic it yourself. Yeah, they've, they've uh, over-engineered these, that's for sure. I believe that brings up a full count. Swing and a miss. Yeah, these guys are trying. They're, they're trying to tee off on, on him. Uh, knowing he's just he's trying to get it over the plate. He, and this guy, he's hugging the plate. I mean, his. Oh, yeah. And a matter of fact, it, I don't know if he's not in out, you know, out of the box close to the plate. Uh, you can kind of see it's where the. pretty close. The line's a little faded. We've had a lot of runs scored here tonight, and the line's kind of faded, but. Check that runner first again. Three balls, two strikes, two outs, top of the sixth. Raiders have two more at bats, down by three now, nine to six. And you mentioned you mentioned earlier uh, about uh, it was back when Knox focusing on the batter instead of checking that runner, but uh, that's going to be ball four. It's going to load them up with two outs. A lot of times they will check that runner at first to uh, – it's almost the same as, and here comes Coach Coley again, but uh, it's almost the same as the batter taking a timeout, throwing the pitcher off. If they if they take that check to first, really can get the pitcher off. But You're right. Get them out of a rhythm. Yes. Uh, but, and again, I, I think sometimes it can, a pitcher throwing over too much, spending too much time, preoccupied with the base runner, it kind of takes him out of his rhythm, bringing the also, ball home. Yes. I mean, there's. Just like you said earlier, there's a lot of different scenarios that go into these things. Uh, not sure. A lot of kids running on and off the field. Yeah, we're going to have about a triple switch here. We're going to have a, a new Man. pitcher, uh, and then everybody else is kind of moving around here. I will tell you, uh, we do know for sure Jarrett's going to, to the mound. Jarrett Arney there. Uh, looks like Jordan is going back to the right field. Uh, I'm pretty sure we're going back to the way we was, aside from Knox behind the plate and Arnie pitching now. So, Was it his glove wrist that was injured? It was his throwing hand. Really? Yes. I knew he had sprained his wrist. He, It was his throwing hand. Uh, he had it wrapped up earlier when he was catching. He yeah, took that a, off now. But like a runner run into him, run oh, through yeah. him there at it, first. That guy was a, yeah. like a linebacker hit him. I mean, <laughs> uh Sure enough, run him over. Wow. Uh, but, yeah, it was hardly anybody's fault. You know, the base runner was doing what he was. Johnny was trying to make a play. Right. And uh, them things happen. It's not the first time it's happened. Uh, we're talking about Jackson the other day. Jackson ran into the guy, first baseman for – Jeff Davis. Jeff Man, Davis. That, you're talking about two trains hitting I'm right telling there. You. Them's two of the biggest guys on the field. Oh, yeah. Uh, both six uh, – uh, six four or so. And well, Jackson being the size pounds. he is, and the the feller for Jeff Davis, he was a good two inches, three inches taller. taller. Yeah, he, I think he was six five, six uh, six. Both of them real solid guys. Uh, it could have been really bad. Yeah, uh, and I mean they they like kissed. Yeah. <laughs> I mean it was just a whack. Uh, so yeah, real fortunate there. I tell you what, we're gonna take a quick break. Uh, be back in just a moment when we get this pitching thing cleaned up. All right, as, as Jarney is on the mound, uh, J. Arney, Jarney, uh, Jarrett Arney is his name. Great kid, great student. I've taught him. Uh, he's completed my pathway as a junior, uh, started as a sophomore. But uh, knocks behind the plate. And I was wrong. I predicted the dude swinging at the first pitch, and he took it. A very disciplined there. Bases loaded chance to blow this game wide open here with two outs in the, in the top of the sixth. The ball outside. 
And we already mentioned, you know, Arnie had a, a wrist injury um, a couple weeks ago. He's recovering, co- recovered or recovering from a little sprain as he was ran into while playing first base. Was that Swainsboro? Another good pitch just off the plate. It's going to be th- three balls and no strikes. Got to think a smart play here is for the batter to take. If you're down and the bases are loaded, you might want to swing away here. Uh, the bat probably won't come off his shoulder. All right. <clears throat> smart baseball says he does it. And uh, sadly, that's a walk. Four pitches. Now, at this point, I'm not swinging till he throws me a strike. Uh, maybe he throws me twice. Yeah, uh, I was, that's exactly what I was thinking. Maybe don't swing until he puts the pressure on you to swing here. But uh, we'll see how it goes. Uh, I will say, Jarney did hit the same spot all four times. <laughs> uh, if he'll just move it over right just a little bit. About six or eight inches. <laughs> He did Man, I love how you see the positive out of out of everything. I'm telling you, he hit that same spot for yeah. the fifth time there. Was, maybe if he just, maybe that umpire give us a call here in just yeah. a minute. Man, this we guy's may slide one. We're gonna try, yeah, we'll slide one in there. But yeah, he has hit that same spot for five consecutive times now. Maybe he could slide one in there in just a second. Just taking a deep breath there. Again, Arnie, a junior. Played a lot of baseball. Uh, I mentioned a couple weeks ago, several guys on this team, my son Jake, uh, stopped playing baseball, started playing a little junior golf and soccer. He slid that one in, and he's not going to make the tag. Another not going to make the throw there. Yeah, another long play there, and that double play depth. Uh, it's going to be 11-6. to six. And that runner – and that hitter there was a different guy. He's not in the lineup. I believe that was Caleb Bennett coming in to make that hit and play there. Uh, he's number 23, and that's who's on the 23 on their lineup. It's a good pitch. Again, just a little inside. Well, he's now facing the first right-handed batter, so if he continues to hit that same spot, he'll be on the inside this time. And still not getting a strike call there, though. And this batter, he, uh, unlike the other ones, this one is a little more central in the batter's box. Wow, what a play. What a play by Jared. Yeah, that's going to end the wow. end. Wow. Yeah, you, you probably heard – you might could have heard the pop in, the, in wow. his mitt um, as that ball was hit pretty uh, sternly back out to the pitcher. Um, that was very impressive. Raiders have two innings now to, to pick away at this lead of five runs, um, and they've, they've scored uh, six here in this inning. And uh, – so yeah, we got a little bit of work to do, and we got uh, you know six more outs in this game. It, the score right now, for sure, is not indicative of how this game has gone um, up to this point. So uh, we're, gonna st- we're gonna stay steadfast, root the Raiders on here, and see what can happen. We're gonna take another quick break. We'll be back in just a moment.
Starting back here at the bottom of the sixth in our seven hole hitter. Uh, no, excuse me, eight hole hitter, Kel Taylor. Uh, Vidalia has made a pitching change. They went to number six, Connor Whited, which may be in some relation to the former pitcher, Bryson Whited. Don't quote me on that because I do not know, but that's a great observation. I'm sending that picture to Sky. I told him he lost his job. <laughs> hey. I may not know baseball quite as much as he does, but we're more than welcome to talk Georgia football if you want to. I know that's what y'all did a lot last time. <laughs> yeah, I went in, yeah, we probably would. Maybe we should or we would have talked about uh, the G-Day game this past weekend and a few other details. But I didn't get to watch that, but I heard that uh, – you know, uh, I, I read the recap, and I heard that our two, Beck and Vandergriff, did pretty good for the – Yeah, Beck looked pretty good. He, he yeah. Both of those quarterbacks are very – they're the prototypes, you know. Yeah. And you, you, you put Stetson beside those two, and you're thinking, how in the world? There's a base That's hit a back nice up, hit up the middle. middle. Wow, what a play. He's not going to be fast enough, but that was a nice, nice catch there. Um, the leadoff – no, not a leadoff, excuse me. Second, Second batter gets on base with one out. Number nine hole batter there, and we're moving to the top here. Yeah, that's what we're trying to get back to the top of the lineup. <clears throat> and a lot of you, some of you may be able to see on camera, but this guy has a very awkward uh, pitching throw. Release, yeah. It's just uh, sort of a definitely sidearm. And, uh, a lot different than the one they've seen previously. So I don't know if you classify him as what's called a submariner, sub, submariner, submariner, uh, which – when where you're, uh, you know, some of those guys you see in the majors at, at times they, they they they'll scrub their knuckles on the ground. They get so low. Um, he's more of I would a, just a true sidearm uh, pitcher. Very interesting how he pitches from left to right or right to left, whichever way. Well, it's it's twofold. The ball, the, just the angle of the ball where, and the, where the ball is released, it's difficult to to pick that up uh, as a batter. Um, and then, again, just the simple angle of the ball coming in, it's very flat. Uh, and it, it, I'm sure he can throw it. You watch the ball, it's going to tail away oh, yeah. uh, from the from the, run, from the batter, or he can make it uh, come back toward uh, the batter. Uh, so, again, it's just an adjustment, you know, uh, gives you yes. that arm angle. And uh, the natural movement of a ball, throwing it, you know, if, you, if you're throwing it over the top, the natural movement is it's pretty much straight with a drop, or sometimes if you get a good, real, a, a nice roll off your fastball, it'll rise it, it'll, just a little bit. Mm -hmm. Throwing throwing at this angle, almost vertical with the with the uh, catcher, almost in the same level, releasing at that level with a nice fastball. That's trouble. That's another infield hit. <coughs> He's going to be fast enough to to get there. Yeah, yeah, we're gonna have a. There, there's no way. She, he, he's going. He's going to ask for help. Please don't lose your mind, coach. Just ask for help from the home plate umpire, and he's going to call him out. If he doesn't call him out, then there's a. We got a big issue. Um, yeah, there's there's no way that that uh, that runner was was out. No way. Uh, Do you need to take a break here? <laughs> no, well, yeah, I was kind of listening and watching. He's not even going to ask for help from home. She may not. Maybe she's not even going to grant it. Wow. Well, we was talking earlier. I hope we didn't jinx ourselves with this about the inconsistency well, with umpires. Well, I'm concerned. I mean, that's that's the only bad call they've made in the field. I I don't know why he can't ask for help from home. Um, I don't know. That's uh, one of those things there. One of those things. Wow. Well, we've had an unfortunately, we've got some. Motions have 
flown here. Uh, as most ball games go, critical calls like that go the wrong way. And uh, I'm telling you, emotions do get high at these ball games. <clears throat> well, there comes a point where, at what point you? And again, I got to be careful too. Uh, I'm yeah. just going to. I'm not going to. I think I'm not going to address this. <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, but uh, it, it was obvious that the call was. That they missed the call, and, and I'm 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 just wondering why we can't get some help at this point. Though, see, at this point, <laughs> even if let's say she. We we were to get some help, and they come and ask the home plate number. I don't think he's, he's not at this point. He's not going. He's not going to call him safe now. No, everything. I mean, everything uh, is after everything that's, that's transpired. Yes. I mean, he's he's. <laughs> I wouldn't turn it over either at that point. After you know, uh, the crowd being upset and 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 whatever was being said yes. and this that and the other. But yes. uh, but unfortunately, uh, you're right. You know, emotions. Uh, Motions fly high at these ball games. Uh, that was a senior that that call was made on. Uh, you hate to see stuff like that happen to these guys, but that's the way it goes, uh, especially when you do it long enough. And we have two outs and runner at second. And again, the bottom. I think I need to see. I'm fiddle farting around here, and it's the bottom of six. Uh, Got another inning here uh, to play. Raiders will get to bat at the bottom of seventh, irregardless. The ball outside. He, and he's struggling to get the ball over the plate. Uh, when he has thrown the ball over the plate, we put the bat on the ball. Yes. Uh, so that's why he keeps, you know, keeps it on that outside. And uh, he's not faced but one. Well, no, he's faced two right-handed batters. Uh, first one he struck out, I believe. And then the second one was on base. And then he's faced two lefties back-to-back. -back. He's struggling to throw to them as he walks. Chariot right there. Runner on first and second with two outs. Uh, we're coming up with Brady here. If there's any guy you'd want to put in the position to make a play, this would be the guy. For sure. This would be the guy. The the composure and the coolness that you would you would expect out of a an athlete that plays in any sport he plays in, the composure that he should have and the ability to, to do his job. This guy definitely does it all. So that's another ball. Two on, two outs. Cawthorn at the plate. Uh, man, he could stab another one in the gap, score two runs, be standing on third in about six seconds. Fouls that one off straight back at you. Brady is quite possibly the, uh, you know, the fastest kid in the school. Um, I know at one time. He, he, I know he was the fastest player on the football team a year, a year and a half ago, um, yes. two years ago. Um, and, uh, you know, I, it's hard to say, you know, we, we got a lot of athletes in the school. I'm not going to say he's the best, you know, the best athlete in the school necessarily, but uh, he, he very likely is the fastest. He is a very speedy individual. That's a good uh, eye there. Him being a senior, me and him are the same age. I grew up with him. Even even we we claim that we are distantly related. Uh -huh. uh, so I'm I'm sure he used to claim me. I don't know if he does anymore now, but he used to claim me. But yeah, you know he's one of my classmates. This ball is hammered. Oh, wow. just out of reach. Get past him too. That's gonna send one home. He's gonna get there. That's safe. That's going to put one to third. He's safe. He's safe there, too. Everybody's safe. And that advances Brady to second. So, Brady's at 
second base. Everybody advances. That adds a run for the Raiders. Yeah, and here's your argument. You know, that the bad call earlier, another run would have scored there. Yes. You know, so that yes. would have been eight. And then we're, now we're within three, you know, and that's what I asked earlier. We just maybe cut that lead in half. But uh, but anyway, that's water under the bridge. But like I said, anybody that you'd want to put there to make that clutch play, that was the guy. And he did just that. All right. Uh, and second and third, so there's no force. There's going to be no easy out necessarily. Well, that's a strike. That, finally, that feller uh, found the strike zone on that one. He struggled here. Knox is going to have a chance here to, you know, to get a little payback. Wow. wow. He's pounded he, two right right down the middle almost the movement, there. The movement on these balls are, I mean, like we said earlier, it's just the, the lateral movement is well, – Look where he rele he releases the ball about two foot away from away the from the plate, and it comes back across yeah. over the plate. Uh, and it's 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 tough. Very, it's almost like swinging at a curveball every single pitch. Very close. It just throwing that away. It there just, it is. Wow. That's a no, that's a Another trouble. Run scores possibly two here. Yeah, two's going very to come much in. so too. That's going to put him at second. He's got to get down. He's wow. Gonna, that's going to end the inning. So was out there, but two run, two more runs score. And the Raiders are back in this sucker. It's 11 to, to 9. And I'm going to say it one more time. I'm going to hush. <laughs> should have been should have been 10 runs right yeah. there. So, uh, but anyway, so we're, we're 11 to 9 going to the top of the seventh. And uh, we're going to take another quick break. Catch your breath. Be back in a moment. Back here in the top of the seventh, uh, going into the final inning. This is number two, Caden Spivey. As that pitch goes outside for uh, Jarrett Arney, still on the mound, not still behind the plate. Uh, the outfield and the infield still the same as we left it in the first. Uh, everybody rotated back to their position after uh, – Tucker's short visit to the mound. Uh, usually a better pitcher uh, in any other occasion. But 
as all things go. Tonight just wasn't his night. That's hammered to center. Brady's going to make that routine play on that, and that's out number one for this inning. Very important to keep them scoreless here and to try to knock on these no extra inning, these uh, extra runs to put us back into a win or possibly extra innings. Free baseball. Everybody loves free baseball. Huh? <laughs> I'm telling you. I want to win. <coughs> In regulation. Yeah. It's a good Good pitch. Lord. That, that's that, hit right out the left. It's going to be tough. Oh, man. Yeah, that's, that's just no man's land. Uh, he hit it right off his fists. Sure enough. Um, just a tough play there. And we're playing, I was going to say a while ago, our defense was straight away, uh, right, you know, right in, in the, the normal positions, and they're actually playing relatively deep. Uh, so just a tough play there. The ball was hit off his hands um, and just didn't jump off the bat. So we have a runner at first with one out here in the top of the seventh inning. This game is it started off slow, then it sped up, and it has slowed back down, 8.23. You know, we're about an hour, uh, two hours and 20 minutes into this game. I'm pretty sure it was the last inning, right, that lasted so long? Yes. It last inning, the top of the six. Well, we, was the, they scored, I think, six runs, and then we just scored four. Right. Uh, scored, uh, yeah. But no, it was six to six. We scored three runs, yeah. Yeah, we scored three. Should have scored four, what? <laughs> they put on, they put on the runs they put on, and we struggled a little bit, and but I'm telling you, this team, they really know how to handle it. Uh, wow. Yeah, Another one hitting the gap. Sharply. Uh, it's going to be first and second with one out. And this right here, sad to say it, is exactly what Jeff Davis did to us. You know, the scores it, it didn't show how we played, but they just kept hitting it right in between. Yeah. I mean – they didn't hit it quite that hard in between, but they yeah. did hit it right I, there. That's what I was told over in Jeff Davis. Was just, it was them, just them little, C&I singles is yeah, what you I'm call it. Yeah, yeah. Dinkers. Dinger. Yep, them yeah. little dinkers right out to the right out to the no man's land. And that's not the case with these guys over here in Vidalia. They, uh, when they swing the bat, they swing it hard. They square it up. Yeah. Them guys over in Jeff Davis, they just hit it barely hard enough to get it over there. And that goes with the, the coaching, you know. The, them guys are pretty good over there. That's hit right up the middle. We were asking a freshman to make the play there. Runner's going to come home. Not sure where that ball was being thrown. Runner advances again. You, you got <clears throat> you to hit the cutoff man there, and that what that will do is – That'll hold uh, the runners potentially at first and second. Um, but uh, one out, runner at second and third. And that's a couple balls that's been stung off uh, Arnie. May see a – who is that, Beecher? No, that is Coach Mack. That's Mack. I'm pretty sure he, he takes the role as the pitching coach. Uh, yeah. Don't hold me to that because I'm pretty sure they're all – they all take commutative right, right. roles, That's but hands on. When we split off for individual time, he takes the usually takes the pitchers, and but uh, a lot of times when he comes out there, it's usually for just a, a mound visit, a confidence booster, and. Well, and you, you mentioned something a while ago. Um, That's a pl the ball zipped past. Uh, uh, the second baseman there. That's right. a play he'll make. He'll make next year. Definitely. You know, he, definitely. It, it's uh, a sharply hit ball. Uh, he he yes, was ju he was definitely. just about there. Just barely out of range. Um, again, it that's just, a that's a play that building building and the weight room and and everything he's got will make will make him soon. Good experience for the young man. Uh, and even as a freshman, he is he is probably one of the hardest. Workers on this on this team. Well, that's a testament to his parents. I know them. Um, I talked with his wife uh, for a while, uh, Miss Tucker, and uh, uh, and his and his dad, <coughs> Jim. Um, mm -hmm. He he's uh, works at the REA, uh, and I think Miss Miss Tucker is in in back in the medical uh, field now. Um, left the classroom, but his, his, I think his his dad's still there at the REA. He's an engineer, um, mm -hmm. so. 
very smart. You, you don't very get intelligent. You don't, you don't do that without you know being uh, yeah. uh, hardworking and uh, uh, a, a learner. You know, day to day learner, and that's what it takes to to get better at anything. Mm. This is going to be trouble. Oh, just barely out of reach there. Yeah, uh, another yeah. run of score. Don't fault him for that. He was trying to make the catch. He takes a little better angle. He um, he may may prevent uh, one of those runs, but uh, it's going to be – is that 14? Is that the total? Yes, I believe so because two runs scored off of that. That, yeah. that incorporates – that means three this inning. Uh, this, this guest sideline over here is getting pretty rowdy after that inning we had. But uh, this is going to be Dan Coleman. This guy, another guy, not on the, not on the uh, starting batting lineup. So I don't know. We we'll give him. I wonder if we gave them one too many runs, but we'll we'll they'll figure it all out. It don't matter that you know the umpire's got to score. He knows. Yeah, regardless of what mistakes we make, they uh, <laughs> they always know at the end. But I, you know, I, I think that's right. I, I, I constantly question myself on yeah. that, but I don't need your help with that because <laughs> <laughs> I'm constantly questioning myself. Yeah. A lot of times I'm up here by myself, and uh, it's hard to keep track, especially. When you're as well, much of a fan as we are, we get caught up in well, the action. Well, and, and, and this is a distraction. You joining me tonight, I appreciate you doing this. It's, it's, yeah. it's, it makes it a lot easier when you got somebody to talk to instead of yourself. Um, but you know, you're 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 yapping with me, and then trying to keep up with the board too. Uh, I believe that goes to a two-zero count there. Still only one out. That's the biggest trouble with yes. a runner at third. Uh, so a deep fly ball scores a run. Obviously a base hit does. Um, I can see a kid dropping a button down here, but I think they're swinging away. He swings. That goes to third. That's going to be that's the a, out there. That's a good play there. Uh, that brings us to two outs. Still in the top of the seventh. It's fourteen to nine. Uh, Raiders are down by five. Yeah, we're gonna get uh, get one more one more shot at it. We just need to try to limit their runs to this. But being down by five in a game that most everybody thought was gonna be a a quick one, uh, uh, it would with the former number one team in the in the state, uh, number one team in the region, yeah. undefeated team in the region, uh, holding them this long. Uh, sticking with them this long has been a testament to our ability and our perseverance. Well said. Uh, and I still think, you know, we're leading. I, I believe the last batter was Knox. So that will bring up our five, six, and seven hole, Cole, Jordan, and Hayden, which is, uh, you know, as baseball people say, it's not the particularly ideal to be – at the five, six, and seven, most people want it one, two, and three, or four, five, and six. But all of these guys can hit, and all of these guys are pretty consistent. Uh, but it'll bring up Cole Jordan and Hayden next for us, as I think he's he just flagged a two-two count. That's my hardest thing to do is keep up with the count because I'll call a strike when he doesn't. That's a runner. Put tag on him, and he's out. He's out of yes, there. He got him. Runner knew it. Great play there by the Raiders to get out of the inning. Um, nice heads up play there. Fourteen to nine, uh, and the Raiders are going to have a chance, and that's all you want to ask for. We're going to come back out and take a quick break, literally catch our breath, and uh, see what happens here in the bottom of the seventh. As your Raiders are hosting the Vidae Indians, as we said, the number one team, undefeated team in region play, twelve and zero. Your Raiders are five and six, five and seven, five and six, seven, five and seven, five and seven. Played twelve as well. Um, so, uh, again, we'll take a quick break and we'll be back in just a moment.
Yes, he absolutely throws it away. Yeah, he could. Bottom of the seventh inning, Raiders' last chance here, last gasp. Uh, played well, we've already talked about, uh, against this team tonight. Um, and, again, uh, got three outs here uh, to see what we can do. Climb back in this thing, five runs to tie, six to win. <coughs> Every single time we have scored runs, it's coming bunches. Uh, I don't know if he's going to make that. Routine play to second there. And then we got a new pitcher, uh, last name Cox. Yeah. He's a straight uh, 12 o'clock, 6 o'clock pitcher, straight overhand. Yes. Um, so, again, a, a, an adjustment. Now, I, don't, I don't know if any of these batters saw that sidearm guy. So, it may not be quite the adjustment. Um, uh, I'm not sure how many batters he I faced. Think, I think uh, our number eight, which will be – which would be the next guy up if one of these guys make it on base may have seen him. Okay. I know for sure Aiden did at the nine hole. This kid's got a little heat. I, we got a, a gun down there. I'd like to see. He's 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 probably throwing in the mid, at least mid 80s, um, if not a tad higher. Got a little pop in the mid. There's a nice little wrinkle. Uh, that's another one out the second. Yep. Slide and play. Oh, and he gets past him. And he's wow. got, got to get back to the bag. Throw an error there uh, by the second baseman. It's going <clears> to <throat> it's going to bring up Hayden here. Uh, with a runner on that was Jordan, pretty speedy guy. Jordan. Not quite as not quite as fast as Brady, but he is pretty quick. Jordan's can put him up and down. He can he uh, can run. Uh, this is going to be Hayden here. He I want to think he did get a hit last at bat. Possibly. Well, we need one here. That's for sure. Um, don't. There's no small ball now. We got to drive runners around uh, with one out. For sure. For um, sure. He'll be swinging the bat. Uh, double play depth for uh, really the second baseman. Short stops in a bit. Uh, he puts the bat on the ball, fouls it over to the right side. Uh, outfielders are straight away. Again, playoff tennis tomorrow, two thirty, right here um, in Alma, at Bacon County High School. That's boys and girls. Wow! First round of state playoffs. Boys uh, soccer advanced uh, to the second round of state playoffs. Unfortunately, that you know they drew uh, a tough uh, second round opponent. Sure uh, did. Being in that third seed position, they had traveling up to Atlanta near Buckhead to face the Lovett School, um, and uh, they come. And saw us last year as a number. We were number one seed. They were two seed out of their region, and them and GAC were the number one and number two teams all year long in the rankings. <clears throat> Excuse me. And they ended up playing in the finals. And they're from the same region, uh, two private schools in Double A. Um, they had a kid on there that was unbelievable. Uh, he yeah. scored seven of their ten goals, and uh, and you know kind of skunked us there in the in the lead eight. Uh, lets you know you, we we had a pretty good pretty good soccer team. And uh, we're pretty solid this year too. I, I don't think uh, Love It is the is the same team they were last year. I know they lost that kid, but they're going to be really tough. And and hopefully our guys will have a chip on their shoulder and go over and give them all they can. All the well, day. even like in baseball, the soccer team is again a fairly young team. I believe yep, they are. Uh, they are. And they've done well this season. They didn't. I mean, we had some superstars last year. Yeah. I mean, for for our school. Uh, as young as our soccer program is, uh, we've had we had some superstars last year, and they this team this year really have uh, filled the shoes. They've had a great season, uh, ups and downs. Well, our region is is is, is pretty good overall, yes. and and yes. it was pretty equal. Any any of the top four teams could have been number one by just one oh, or yes. two games. You yes, know. <clears throat> we could have been a one or two seed. Uh, if you know if if th things would have went our way here or there. Um, and but it just didn't work out that way. Same way our girls had a fantastic record-breaking oh, yes. season. One oh, more, yes. uh, they've won more games this year than they combined in all of uh, the other seasons com combined. So and they advanced the state playoffs. That's going to end the game for the for the Raiders. What a whale of a game they played. Uh, a little up and down here as well. Fourteen to nine is going to be your final. But that score, that five-run score, is not indicative of how these guys uh, hung no, in there and, and, and played well. Um, just just proud of them and the coaching staff, especially uh, seeing how. You know, just about 45, uh, about an hour, hour and a half before the game, right after school, a group of uh, the players went to the store like they usually do after school, pick up a few things before they come back to the game and to, to get ready for that. 
it got a little fender bender. Uh, a couple got banged up. Everything's everybody's good. Um, uh, one or two might be sore, but nobody's uh, hurt horribly. Um, but it did keep one, maybe two, from playing tonight. But again, just remember them and uh, and and just be thankful that, that it, it turned out like it did. So um, be sure to uh, tune in to the tennis tomorrow. Yes, and, uh, broadcasting live. Come out and and, and witness them play. It's a free event. Uh, you just walk up. Uh, as far as I know, they've been free all year. With GHSA not, involved, though, they may they may require some money. I'm not, not sure. Not 100 sure if you'll make the trip to love it, will you? No, uh, <laughs> and I'll tell you why. It's number one is I'm gonna be out. Of, I'm, I've got to be out of town Friday, right? Uh, for a personal reason, and then um, and it would be a late trip getting back. But they are broadcasting uh, live themselves. It's a free event. What they do, it's not a subscription base. Um, they they gotcha. produce they produce it themselves. I'll be pushing that link out on okay. social media, email and such, so you'll be able to watch if yeah. you want to our boys play. Um, if, I think they, they start at 5 o'clock uh, Thursday afternoon, second yeah. round of state playoffs. All right, so we want to, uh, again, congratulate our guys on, on playing a, a solid game tonight, uh, considering everything that's going on. Um, uh, again, I thought we played well against the uh, number one team in our region and number six team in the state. Uh, so uh, we're gonna we will face them again Thursday at their place, and then we'll be back home uh, Friday night for uh, for baseball right here. It's gonna wind up the regular season. It'll be senior night. Let's so come out and support these young men. On behalf of myself, Brent Johnson, Caleb Griffin, I want to thank him for being on the horn with me tonight. Thank um, you for the opportunity and uh, enjoyed it. And uh, so again, good night and God bless. <laughs>